All right, welcome back. We'll be heading over to Nicole Kente in a couple of minutes from now for all the weekend's uh, busy sporting news. Well, it certainly has been a busy weekend for the Democratic Alliance. Uh, it took over the Nelson Mandela Bay mayorship and excluded Pumzile Van Damme from its shadow cabinet. Party leader John Steenhuisen says it's his prerogative to amend his shadow cabinets in consultation with caucus leaders. But that seems to have caused some other issues. For some analysis now, I'm joined by political analyst Yan Yan Yobed. Yan Yan, always a pleasure speaking to you. Uh, as I say, so much happening uh, with the DA this weekend. We want to speak about Inhaba Banga and, of course, uh, just your thoughts on Belinda Bozzoli and the passing of her. But let's deal with this uh, sabbatical issue at the top line. It looks very simply that the leader of the DA is telling Pumzile Van Damme, take a sabbatical for your health reasons. It seems to be a nice gesture, but it seems to have spiraled out of control. How did we get here? Um, good morning, Gareth. Um, no, I think um, it spiraled out of control because it was so poorly handled. And um, I do not know what passes for strategic thinking in the DA these days but clearly whatever um, does pass for it was on sabbatical itself. Um, because much as Pumzile van Dam is struggling with health issues, and much as she is not performing at the top of her game, she remains an excellent member of parliament, and she is one of the very few people who is an expert on the very difficult and important communications portfolio. It's very technical portfolio. Very few people can handle it. And she is certainly the leading member of parliament in any political party on that. That said, she has not been performing at top notch because a member of parliament does not only attend parliament. They must do constituency work, um, which is like chemotherapy um, for politicians, but it needs to be done. That is when the area of the country that you are um, responsible for, um, you help the people with their ID documents and with other rather prosaic things. And it needs to be done for people to vote for you. Thirdly, you must, for instance, do um, fundraising. That sort of thing. But if you are too ill to do so, then obviously that is problematic. That said, Mr. Steenhuisen, the last time I checked, was not a medical doctor, and to the best of my knowledge, has not taken the trouble to consult a medical doctor or, it seems, to consult Pumzile van Damme. Mm. Now, if politicians mm. had labor rights, and as the law stands, they actually don't, but it's very old case law that comes from about 2000, and it might well change if Pumzile does what she says, which is to challenge this. But if there was labor rights in politics, then this would have amounted to an attack on those labor rights because it is a unilateral change of labor conditions. It's poorly, poorly handled by everybody. It's remarkable. I just do want to say she hasn't been dropped from the shadow cabinet. She's been suspended from it to give her three months to get her neurological disorders um, as under control as is possible. I am not a medical uh, expert, so I'm not going to place myself in any position to say what needs to be done, but something needs to be done. Uh, the question that many people are asking uh, no, is, no, no, how did this no. end up uh, on social media as almost the first uh, channel of communication outside of the Democratic Alliance? It's a, it's a very simple question. Why did uh, Pumzile Van Dam and John Steenhuisen not get on the telephone with each other and simply have the conversation? From your lips to God's ears, Gareth, I would have thought it's um, like communication 101 and decency 101. But decency 101 is very good in some parts of the Democratic Alliance, but not in the parts of the Democratic Alliance which defines it in the public eye. So, um, good question, heaven knows. Uh, th there is a, a suggestion that this has got to do with the fact that Pumzile Van Dam uh, did not support John Steenhuisen uh, in the election for the DA leadership. Do you, do you, do you think there's any, any, uh, any weight to that? We'll have to wait and see. At this stage, I wouldn't say so. And that's not just my impression. Let facts speak. Um, the DA made its most important non-elected decision um, in the last week when it appointed Sivuwe Gwakube as its national spokesperson. Sivuwe did not support John Steenhuisen for leadership of DA. She supported Mbali Ntuli. She was appointed to this extremely important position, nevertheless. Um, so 
I don't know what happens in the head of John Stenhausen or any other person. I'm but a lowly political journalist. I'm not a psychologist. But um, if so, then it would be inconsistent to appoint one of your strongest opponents into the national spokesperson job, which I think is an excellent idea, and to, on the other hand, um, get rid of one of your opponents. I don't know whether this was well intended, but it was poorly executed. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the chaos down in Nelson Mandela Bay for a moment uh, with the Democratic Alliance as well and the new mayorship of Nelson Mandela uh, Bay in Kaba Banga. I mean, from the very get-go, even just as far as the election process uh, was concerned, that was marred by uh, disruptions. And now you've got the man who's going to have to try and, and steer Nelson Mandela Bay, A, through its mayorship, which seems to be contested, and it's the, uh, one of the biggest hotspots uh, for COVID-19 uh, in the country, uh, certainly on the back foot from the very start. Yes, um, well, I think Nelson Mandela Bay, the people of Utenag, Dispatch, and Port Elizabeth um, are very lucky to have a guy like Naba Banga. Um, he is a very, very good politician, a uh, high-class politician. He's got his work cut out for him. One has to say that the chaos, and um, I have to say give discredit where it's due, um, was the ANC's doing. And it is a new low point in ANC behavior, what happened in Port Elizabeth, to actually abduct the speaker, who is one of your own members, abduct someone from the council chambers. That is unthinkable. Um, but it is what the ANC did. And you know, I watched the ANC in Parliament pontificating about the behavior of the um, EFF, and rightly so, in the Powers and Privileges Committee. And I say nothing that the EFF has ever done. And in my experience, nothing the EFF could ever think up could ever go as low as the INC did um, in Nelson Mandela Bay. The INC in Nelson Mandela Bay, at least as far as the Andile Lungisa um, grouping is concerned, they are no Democrats. They are a disaster, and they are an embarrassment to our country. Um, so now Naba Banga must deal with it. As far as the um, COVID situation goes, that situation is handled on a national and provincial level, um, and the role of the city is to implement. So, um, yes, he has to deal with it, but no one said it was going to be easy. Mm. Somehow, mm. amidst the chaos within the Democratic Alliance, the Eastern Cape DA has perhaps been the best functioning unit. It is their time to prove themselves. All right. Yan Yan Yobel, I'm going to say thank you very much. Always a pleasure speaking to you uh, speak, uh, here on the South African Morning. Political analyst uh, joining us uh, here on the show regarding what is happening uh, in the Democratic Alliance, uh, both in the Western Cape and also in the Eastern Cape.